Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at a very low tier ship. This is the Pinghai, a premium, a premium Chinese tier 3 cruiser. Uh, the reason we're looking at the ship is because I think she was pretty much handed out to almost everybody <laughs> as, a, uh, as, uh, as an apology for some downtime or something like that. So uh, tier 3 premiums. And this is a topic that I actually wanted to talk about for quite a while, lower tier premiums in general. Um, but before we get to that, uh, let's have a very brief look at uh, the historical Pinghai, because that thing actually existed, which is one of the benefits of talking about lower tier ships. <laughs> I don't have to, yeah, they made that up, but uh, I can actually talk about the existing ship. This ship, unlike her sister, was built in China but uh, in the 1920s, but uh, she was constructed with uh, lots of Japanese assistance from the design to overseeing to implementation. Uh, she has Japanese guns on her and uh, she was the flagship of the Chinese Navy. The late construction was somewhat overshadowed by the problem that Japan at the time was occupying parts of China and was looking to occupy more parts of China which uh, did not particularly help to collaboratively build a ship. When she was eventually finished, uh, she, was, uh, she was used uh, mostly in, in defensive operations on, on the rivers and uh, she got herself into a tier 7 game and got sunk by the Kaga. Uh, Japan eventually ended up uh, taking over most of China and uh, not all of it, but uh, uh, they, they did end up raising the ship from from the bottom of the river and because she was in relatively good condition uh, they uh, towed her over to Japan and decided that she was going to become a, a, a convoy escort. So she was renamed and turned into a convoy escort and actually co escorted uh, ships in the Battle of Leyte Gulf in the Philippines where she got herself again into a carrier game and ended up being sunk by the Langley. But at least it wasn't a tier 7 carrier at that point. So a uh, flagship of the Chi Republic of China Navy. Now given that Japan was uh, somewhat involved in the ship and given that we don't actually have a tier 3 uh, we don't have a tier 3 tech, te tech tier 3 tech tree pan asian cruiser English Terry <laughs> do you speak it. Uh, we are going to compare her to the Katori which is a Japanese or which was a Japanese training ship I believe and which is one of the other tier 3 premium cruisers that is hanging around here. Uh, the first thing that we can notice is that the Pinghai gets a smoke screen. This is a regular smoke screen not a fuel smoke so you get a 24 second smoke out of it but you only get a single charge. Now this is tier 3 there are not an awful lot of smoke screens around at tier 3 but uh, still uh, it's just one and you only get one torpedo reload unlike the two that you get on the cartery. Uh, she gets fewer hit points otherwise the hull is relatively similar. She is a, a little bit faster by four knots but uh, loses out a little bit on maneuverability in return. She does however have an extra gun turret. So uh, the cartery has two twin guns of the 140 millimeter Japanese cruiser guns whereas the Pinghai gets six, all in all, in three twin turrets. The torpedo loadout is, for all intents and purposes, identical. You get marginally more damage on the cutlery, and uh, you, do have an extra, uh, you do have an extra reload on the Japanese side. Uh, the AA uh, is, well, again, for all intents and purposes, identical. This is tier three. <laughs> you don't have any AA. Uh, the concealment is a bit better on the Ping Hai, but otherwise these two are very, very similar ships. Now, um, it's tier 3, so one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about tier 3 premium, or lower tier premiums in general, and tier 4 is sort of workable, but uh, anything below that, uh, the, the big problem is that uh, no, on the best of days, servers aren't particularly busy these days, and lower tiers are basically you're playing bot games. So you will be fighting in maybe with one or two uh, against one or two players uh, at best but uh, most of the time you'll be in bot games so you'd somehow you somewhat have to evaluate the the validity or the 
um, the usefulness of a low tier premium uh, against uh, against bots. So for new players, uh, should you be getting a, a premium, a tier three premium? If uh, for new players, if you're grinding up tech trees, you're going to get through tier three relatively quickly, and you're usually going to probably settle around tier four and maybe up to tier five. So if you're playing a tier three premium. Uh, you're either going to be facing bots or you're going to be bottom tier in a uh, in a tier four game, but still, there's not going to be an awful lot of enemy players around at these tiers. Now, uh, the Ping Hai is a Pan Asian cruiser, and uh, as such, you would assume that she gets uh, deep water torpedoes, but I don't think that's the case here, because uh, it's it's not mentioned. It's usually it would be mentioned under the under the ship skills. So these are well, Japanese torpedoes, <laughs> because she was more or less constructed under Japanese supervision and according to Japanese plans. So no, she does not get deep waters. And uh, we can choose between uh, more speed and more acceleration or a better maneuverability. I personally prefer more speed because at this point, because the uh, speed is something you really need. <laughs> as a cruiser at these lower tiers and uh, I can live with the acceleration and uh, the, the traverse and is not that bad we can work with that also you have uh, you have limited choice of modules we get to that in a second she does get access to historical camouflage because this is a premium ship so for a relatively small amount of gold and I don't know how much it is because I can't remember but it's like I think it's like 300 or ish around that somewhere you get access to the historical camouflage, which we are obviously putting in here. Uh, this gives us range on the main battery, range on the torpedoes, and the range on, the, on these torpedoes is for tier three very, very good. Uh, a max traverse and better surface detection, making for a very sneaky ship. In terms of equipment, you don't, like I said, have an awful lot of choice. One of the logical sort of choices is the main battery mod one, given that these Japanese turrets don't turn particularly well, but uh, she has an extra turret, so I've actually gone with mod 2 for a slightly faster reload. Usually in slot 3, I would prefer to use the acceleration mod, but we don't have access to that, so we're taking steering gear mod. And in slot 3, we're going to be going with propulsion. Uh, Terry, why is that? What? Why are the other modules so useless? Well, let's have a very brief look, because this is low tier. Uh, you can get the torpedo defense modification, which gives you 15% torpedo damage reduction, but not 15% points, 15% of your existing torpedo damage reduction. So it's very, very little. The other one gives you better survivability on the turrets. Getting the turrets shot off, not a massive problem. Uh, you can use a repair kit to deal with it, or you can wait for them to come back online. Uh, generally not something you would you would use an awful lot. You can kind of use it to counterbalance the uh, main battery mod 2 here if you want, because that reduces the survivability. But uh, I didn't feel that, I didn't feel from testing that it was necessary, so I actually went with the propulsion mod for extra speed. And here in slot 2, you get the damage control system modification, which has the same problem as the torpedo damage reduction modification, it doesn't add an awful lot if you don't have a massive value to begin with. And this is a tier 3 ship, so no you don't. The other one being uh, repair time, which is sort of the which is sort of the same thing as you have uh, as you have here in slot 3. So the steering gear mod going a bit for, for maneuverability is not a bad choice here. Which all in all gets us to uh, 25 knots or almost 20, 26 knots and an under six, under six second turn time, which is not bad. And we've got the main battery reload down to just over seven seconds and the range to almost nine kilometers. And the torpedo range with 7.8 is very, very good. Now, um, given that this is a tier three premium and I'd mostly be fighting bots, I've been throwing all the things in there. So we got premium consumables and uh, I've pulled a legendary commander out of the pocket. I haven't gone into the talents, because uh, that's a that's a story for another video, but uh, 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 he has an, an interesting skill that we can use on this ship. That is the uh, torpedo reload expert skill, which uh, reduces the reload on the torpedo reload booster and gives us an extra charge. So that brings us up to two, all in all, with the uh, uh, with which is the same as we have on on the cutlery on the Japanese side.
Lastly, uh, given that it's a premium, we can have a very quick look at the battle honors. Uh, you get some resources and you get a single piece of copper. Uh, usually these missions on battle honors are not difficult on premiums. It's basically free resources that you get with the ship. So um, even if you don't plan on actually using the ship down the road, you may as well just go through the battle honors and, uh, and you know, uh, get, the f get, the free, get yourself the free copper. Like I said, uh, tier three battles uh, generally mostly you'll be uh, you'll be encountering enemy bots. So uh, in this game, and that's why I'm only going to be featuring one today. In this game, it's a two v two. We are facing a Wix, which is a very good little destroyer. And uh, obviously, uh, given that you know everyone got one, I think uh, there are three ping highs in the game, <laughs> including myself, and the rest is bots. We're playing domination on big race. Um, the trick with bots is, uh, well, there, there are several issues that you have if you play a ship like this against bots. Um, bots can very easily dodge torpedoes because they are, have no restrictions in terms of maneuverability. They can just turn the ship around. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they can do a donut with the ship and uh, just evade the torpedoes. So your torpedo range is not necessarily a benefit here because you do need to get relatively close to make your torpedoes work. The other thing is that uh, you have a smoke screen, but bots can unfortunately negate the smoke screen and just keep you spotted anyway. So you might smoke up uh, thinking that you're safe, but if there's a bot within range, then it might be that you're spotted anyway, even though you're sitting in your smoke screen. So uh, that somewhat limits the uh, the utility of these things. But um, uh, we have, on the flip side, we have uh, relatively good high explosive shells with these Japanese guns. And the armor piercing isn't bad either, so uh, setting fires on bots is a good way to farm some damage because they don't use damage control. I'm heading towards A cup, but I know that I'm going to run into at least one enemy ship. And yes, it is an A, so that's probably the Wix, uh, because he's faster than everybody else. So, and it's the first cup, so most likely the Wix is in A, that's a good piece of information. I am now spotted, but uh, this is a very sneaky ship, and with a historical camo, the Wix actually... Uh, doesn't outspot me by an awful lot. Now he has torpedoes away, so I'm not broadsiding here. Most likely he has torpedoes away. And uh, I am just gonna reverse here and see if the Wix wants to get into a fight. I'm not in the best position, but uh, okay. Wix has decided that he does not want to fight the cruiser. I'm not sure if he knows that I don't have deep water torpedoes, because uh, usually deep water torpedoes on Pan Asian ships are no danger to uh, to destroyers. But it looks like the Wix decides that he does not want to get in here and uh, retreats. And I'm setting a fire on the castle that is going to burn because again, it's a bot, they're not damage controlling. I'm not yet launching my torpedoes, so keeping an eye on the Wix over there because he might drop from the other side. And obviously now the friendly bot here is in the way, so I'm gonna have to wait for the castle to turn around. And then we will uh, drop the torpedoes and there come the Wix torpedoes. Yeah, he has launched, but uh, I've seen these coming. Karlsruhe sent some torpedoes, and we've, we've got the bot done. Uh, there's the second ping high over here. Now I am going to be uh, engaging the wicks, so I'm switching over to armor piercing. Just doing more damage against destroyers, and uh, the armor piercing on these 140 mils is not bad. And as you can see, uh, we're doing nice full penetrations against the wicks over there. As long as he stays at range, that is uh, not a, a duel he is going to win. He's very isolated over there. Uh, it wasn't a bad plan from him, <laughs> but uh, uh, there's some more torpedoes somewhere in the rear. Okay, that's coming out on the other side. Um, Wix has taken out uh, one of the friendly bots, but uh, he is now facing... He is now facing two cruisers and uh, he's absolutely got no chance to get out of that one. So uh, the, the best he can, he can do is maybe rush but, uh, and send some torpedoes out. But yeah, we're in relatively maneuverable cruisers. We know that the torpedoes are coming and the Wix is not really dead. Uh, he has landed a couple on the friendly ping high, I believe. Uh, that leaves the uh, enemy ping high over there. We are holding two of the capture circles and we are a kill ahead. So, uh, well, uh, that uh, looks relatively promising for now. Uh, he is sending torpedoes at the Nassau. Nassau is obviously dodged because it's a bot. So uh, we do have to watch out with these torpedoes because they are having a long range, but we know that. And again, using the, the armor piercing is actually quite effective on these 140 mils and uh, uh, at these lower tiers, especially if we're, if we're fighting at close range. Otherwise, if you're shooting at bots, you're much better off using the high explosive. 
and uh, yeah, we're not shooting any tr any planes down with um, any planes down with this. Now the Ping Hai goes undetected, and then it's immediately respotted. So that's because he is uh, going for for our carrier. Given that this, uh, they are bot carriers, they're useless anyway. So I'm not really going to be. I'm not going to, be, going to be trying to save that thing. Uh, he's more interested in going after the carrier than trying to win the game. So uh, I'm just going to unload at him while uh, sailing towards the bot battleship there. And I'm not trying to torpedo the Orion. I do have the torpedo range, but it's a bot and bots are just going to easily dodge these. So a friendly bot Hosho. Okay, Ping Hai done. Uh, Citadel scored. I'm not sure if he might if he still gets uh, gets the Hosho. But uh, we get torpedoes out at the Orion. That should be the end of the Orion. We can send some more armor-piercing shots into the bow section for, for extra damage. But uh, generally against bots, you're better off using high explosive for the permafires. But the Orion's dead anyway. And that just leaves uh, another bot over here. So uh, while we're watching the rest of this play out, um, I would generally not recommend new players to buy low tier premium ships just because it's not really worth it. Your your main usage of premium ships is to is to uh, is to train your commanders, and uh, once you, once you've reached the, once you're getting higher up uh, in the in the tiers, you're most likely going to be playing random battles in the tiers that you're playing and you're not going to be staying at tier 3 for a very long time so uh, tier 3 is going to get relatively boring for uh, it's more it's more bot farming and uh, there, there, there's really not much of a use for a premium because there's no competitiveness in in these lower tiers that said this is a free one so everyone got one given uh, so you may as well play it if you have it and if you have a um, if you are playing the Pan-Asian cruisers, the one thing for you to remember is that you don't have deep waters, which uh, is probably more a problem for everybody else to remember, because usually uh, these things can't torpedo destroyers. You can. <laughs> so uh, everybody, every destroyer captain out there, please be careful. This might, is, this might be a Pan-Asian cruiser, but it has regular torpedoes. Uh, other than that, yeah, for, for the occasional round of fun or for a little bit of farming in a quiet night uh, against bots, you can use it, absolutely. It's, uh, it's a neat little ship, but uh, for regular play, it's probably not a thing. So if you are looking to purchase premiums, I would, rec I would as new players, I would recommend generally to um, make your way up to like tier 4, tier 5, maybe tier 6. Once you're sort of comfortable there and you know what kind of ship you like playing, uh, then uh, save up a bit of gold from the from the daily logins and the blitz pass and everything and uh, see if you can get yourself a mid-tier premium maybe and uh, supplement that uh, to your uh, line that you're grinding or a class that you really enjoy playing there are a couple of decent ones out there and then uh, then they start and it help, can help you farming uh, farming resources and uh, increasing increasing the level of your commander without too much hassle and even if you eventually make it up to tier 10 and you're playing more regularly in high tiers uh, just having pulling the occasional tier 5 tier 6 premium out to play with friends is something you're going to do even if you're in high tiers and you don't have to keep the tech tree ships around but uh, like tier 3 for me is a bit on the lower end for wanting to actually have a premium but given that it's free uh, i'll take it it's not a bad little ship it can have quite some fun games in that thing Anyway, that's all I have today. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.